Hey everyone, this is Alchemister. This is once again Star Trek Online Rise of the Red Shirt. Last time, we retrieved a Klingon defector from a questionable trading outpost. This time, we're going to be picking up that story thread later in uh, the mission's secret orders. But for now, we're going to be doing Task Force Hippocrates. Let's jump in. There are more reports than usual about Klingon and Gorn attacks along the border of Federation space. Starfleet has created a task force to patrol the area. Proceed to your assigned coordinates in the Xerentine system and begin patrolling. If you receive any distress signals, you are authorized to do whatever is required to assist. So yeah, this is sort of a grunt mission. In that I'm not quite sure if any real story progress is made. It's just sort of... You're ordered to, uh... Go... Go help shit, basically. It's it's a patrol mission, base. It's a glorified patrol mission. It's not it's not a bad mission. It's just sort of it's just sort of a patrol. Basically, it's, I keep in mind I haven't played the I haven't played this and paid attention to the text. I've played this quite a bit, but you know mostly it's been just blazing through. So I'm not quite certain. You keep doing that. Stop that. It keeps going down to one uh to one one bar. I hate that. Uh, I haven't read the text in a while, so this is going to be... But I'm fairly certain nothing of... Uh, nothing of... Gravity happens in this mission. Uh, it is, however, our introduction to the Pycanus sector, so Leonard Nimoy is going to be coming out in five. And I'm still in orbit over a Regulus. Fortunately, Pycanus is just down the road. Not far at all. Okay, it appears I miscalculated. Okay, and here we are, about to enter the Pycanus sector block. Alright, this is our first time in the Pike Canis Sector Block. Sort of. In Rise of the Red Shirt, I mean. Officially. And hey, that's convenient. Xerentine's right there. But first... The Klingons are willing to use any weapon available to destroy the Federation. Even time itself. It falls to a small group of brave Starfleet officers to restore the timeline and rescue one of their own. Who controls this sector may determine who controls the war. And there you go. Introduction by old Spock. This place is important. Now, the Xerentine system. There are more than 20 micro-nebulas in the Xerentine system, at least three of which contain protomatter. Because of this, the system has frequently been contested and was occupied by Jem'Hadar forces during the Dominion War. The Xerentine government, while officially remaining neutral, has recently agreed to give Starfleet full and open access to its space. Xerentine knows who the good guys are. Here's a hint. They're not the Klingons. It's not the Klingons. Klingons are acting like meatheads. If you know the backstory, if, you, if you've watched Deep Space Nine, then the way the Klingons, it, you know, the Empire itself it behaves in the backstory of Star Trek Online is really stupid. It irks me. To all Federation ships in range, this is the SS Boyce. We are taking fire from Gorn fighters and need aid from any ships in range. Repeat, we are being attacked by Gorn and need help. Alrighty. You die now. Thanks for the assistance. We diverted from our deliveries to deploy these emergency power emitters, but now we need your help to activate them. 
Our starboard power coupling is blown, and we're reading damage to our navigation systems and warp core. If you can reroute the satellite's energy output to us, we can use them to keep our shields up while we make repairs. Now you're going to want to stay by these guys, because a ship is going to attack immediately after that dialogue finishes. It is also screwed. That's one. That's some Brock. Oh god. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. It's okay. It's okay, my engineer read Star Trek Federation. That didn't do anything to me. Ah, I can't do it while he's shooting at me. So I have to make him stop. He stopped. Now I can do it. So, let's see. Uno, dos, tres. The fourth one is inside this asteroid. The first time I played this mission, it took me a while to figure out exactly where the hell this thing was, and I was flying around until I finally caught it out the corner of my eye inside this giant rock. You know, I would have thought that this would probably be an ideal place to hide your ship in if you were going to build these big-ass power converters. Is inside here. I mean, you're practically immobile anyways. You might as well afford yourself some kind of support. And looks like there's a few cozy spots in here that you could pick. The voice is hailing us, Captain. Power levels are holding steady, Vice Admiral. We can handle it from here. Thanks for the helping hand. It's always nice to see Starfleet protecting the trade routes. Captain, incoming message from Starfleet. A Vulcan medical vessel, the T'Pau, is requesting assistance. We are the closest ship. I have laid in a course to the T'Pau's coordinates, sir. We can leave on your command. Warp to the T'Pau. And I'm going to warp through a rock. Ouch. If this were Starfleet Command 3, my crew would be dead. Hailing, to, hailing the T'Pau, sir. Channel open. I am Salar, captain of the Vulcan medical ship Tapau. There is an outbreak of Takanian syndrome on the planet's surface. It is of utmost importance that the medical supplies we carry be delivered immediately. Please accompany us to the planet and defend us from enemy ships. Yeah. I hope you don't mind I'm going ahead of you. So, this guy will travel so damn slow. So damn slow. He move. He literally. He takes his sweet time. So don't bother waiting for him. Just as long as you kind of have him in sight, you're gonna be fine. Just as long as you can keep an eye on him. But if you go ahead, if you keep going ahead of him, generally you're not gonna have very much trouble. Combat impulse engines, Mark. Duh. Our trio of frigates are shooting at me. But yeah, there's also, there's another, and I don't think it's part of this mission, I think it might be a patrol where you have to escort the rover, is its name? That mission's painful. I did that with a David JGB00 a couple days ago, and Jesus, that was bad. It was, it was more, like, I remember it being a lot more interesting the first time around, but doing it the second time, oh god. Like when you're we when you can destroy the enemies that quickly, especially once you've gotten a tier two ship and you're able to make them pop for pretty much the first time. Oh my god, well, having to wait for the rover is painful. Okay, where are you at? Twenty-seven. I'm tabbing, we're not seeing anything. Uh, 
Um, now, I actually had to do the rover mission twice when I first played through the game. The first time, I traveled too far ahead of it, and it kind of ceased to exist. It didn't really get attacked by anything because I wasn't leaving anything behind for it to get, for it to get attacked by. Um, it just kind of vanished. It just disappeared, and I had to end up going back and doing the mission over again, much to my frustration. But yeah, the mission with the rover in it, that gets painful. Are we gonna move to Pow? Are you are you even moving? Criminy. So, T'Pau is a character who was introduced in Star Trek The Original Series, featured in uh, Star Trek Enterprise as well. Are we gonna get moving? And that is a Vulcan Dekir uh, class starship, which was introduced in Enterprise. Like, you never really saw Vulcan ships, like what they looked like outside of, like, the... You saw a Vulcan shuttle, and oh, now you're moving. Uh, you saw a Vulcan shuttle in First Contact, not in First Contact, in the motion picture, and you saw a scout ship in First Contact. And then in Enterprise, they kind of introduced you to what the big Vulcan ships look like. Of course, this being pa after the TNG era, uh, I'm flying around in a Galaxy-class starship, it doesn't exactly look that big anymore. But uh, back in the era of Enterprise, that was a very impressively sized ship, and what are you doing? Oh, please tell me you haven't glitched. Move. There you go. I'm not sure what the hell just happened there, but apparently somehow I fixed it, so... It was colliding with the geometry somehow. I really wish I could just hit follow and let my ship adju adjust the course. You are freaking out. What's going on? Do I have to stay within a certain distance for you to go? I mean, that's that ship. That ship still looks a fairly decent size, even against a galaxy class. You know, even, even like, sitting next to a Galaxy class, it still looks like it's a fairly decent size. It was quite impressive in Enterprise. One of the few impressive things about that show, in fact. What are you doing? There we go. Am I going to have to keep smacking into this thing to get it moving? Boy. So do I have to stay within one? Do I have to stay within a distance of one to keep this thing moving? This thing's maximum speed isn't even a fourth of the... Again. What's going on? This has never happened before. Move! Move! Get going! Oh my god. There we go, finally. It is quite large. It is quite large. Then again, the ships in Star Trek Online, not particularly, particularly to scale, you have to remember. I'm fairly certain compare, if this were actually in scale, it wouldn't be close. 
Especially the shuttlecraft. Especially how big the shuttlecraft are. Not to scale at all. The developers actually mentioned having tried putting everything to scale. I need to slow down a little bit. Just a tad. Take the edge off a little bit. There we go. Uh, they actually tried making the shuttlecraft to scale, but you couldn't even freaking see them when they did. Like, they tried to make the Defiant to scale... And uh, it was so tiny, it was barely you could barely register it. There actually used to be a tiny model of the... The original model of the Defiant that was able to dock at Deep Space Nine, uh, believably, anyways, uh, used to be in the Foundry. You're freaking out again. My god, what is going on? This has never happened to me. This is new. Move! Damn it! There we go. I'm gonna have to keep effing doing this. Now, inside the Dakir is a Talkir support craft. It's essentially a shuttle with a... With a I don't know if it's a phaser turret or what kind of turret it is. It, it's a turret of some sort. I'm unsure of where it is stats-wise. I think it might be equal to or at least close to the Delta Flyer. You go pop now. Oh, thank God. I don't know what just... I don't know what happened. The game has been... has glitched out on me something fierce. Hang on, Lima. Alright, Lima, what's up? Captain the Tapau is hailing us. Vice Admiral, we are detecting weapons fire on the planet's surface. My ship is on a mission of peace. We are unequipped to deal with armed resistance. Will you secure the area so our healers can transport to the planet's surface safely? Of course we will. That's what the hazard team does. Make things safe. By making it temporarily unsafe because of all the crossfire and explosions. You know what I mean. You get what I was saying. Load now. Load, please. Thank you. Yeah, that's some nice-looking ground. Can I beam in now? Thank you. Captain, I'm reading multiple Gorn and Klingon life signs between here and the medical facility. We'll need to deal with them before the Vulcan medical team can transport. Oh, that's no problem. Let me just turn this on. Let me just turn this on. Let me just turn this on. Da 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 da. Hi! Totally making it safer. It's safe, gonna be safer for everyone. Because my shotgun said so. Klingons! You're an unfortunate soul, because you get kicked. back there. So that is Dampening Field. It dampens their weapons, I believe. It debuffs their weapons. It 
uh, also affects their shields. If I'm correct, I'm sure I, I'm sure I'm probably forgetting something. Turn. Thank you. 